Hey, everybody, and welcome to another Learning Statistics with Jamovi video. Okay, so in the last video that posted to the channel, uh, we did multiple regression, but we did simultaneous multiple regression. In this video, what I want to do is show you how to do sort of a hierarchical multiple regression. So we're going to use the same data file, and we're going to use the same kind of setup that we did in the MR video. Don't worry, I'll set it up. If you did not watch that video, I'll set it up. And then we'll add, so we'll start with one predictor and then we'll add another predictor. So we're only gonna have two predictor variables. So two X variables, one Y variable, okay? And then we're gonna see what additional information that we get when we do a hierarchical. Now, this isn't a fully hierarchical multiple regression that you could do in say SPSS, but it is useful to get that preliminary information for what happens to your regression when you add predictors. And the thing that we're going to focus on is the statistic of delta r squared. We're going to see whether or not the change in r squared is useful. OK, so adding a predictor to see if the model is better or worse than with the first predictor. So first predictor is the one that we're thinking is going to be the best. So a situation where you might do this is if you have a lot of control variables. So first you want to set up, you want to see what your, you know, your main um, manipulation variable, your main X variable, you want to set that up and you're like, yeah, that is exactly what uh, I want to see. The change in X leads to a change in Y. And that's a significant change. But you have all these control variables like age, gender, um, socioeconomic status. And you want to see whether or not when you add those control variables in, how does your relationship change? So maybe the explanation, the overall model gets better, or maybe the overall explanation gets worse. And you want to be able to say that that is the case because these control variables are the things that do matter in our complex lives. OK, they do matter. Right. So age might have an impact on an X, Y relationship. And you want to see if that impact is greater than or less than in a significant way. If it, like if it completely destroys the model and it makes the model poor, then your theoretical basis for the X, Y is probably not as strong or as good as you thought it was. And so that's back to the drawing board way you change the measurement, way you change the theory, the assumption, the hypothesis. It all matters here. So that's why you would do a hierarchical regression in this way in Jamovi. There are stronger ways to do it in other programs. But of course, this is a learning statistics with Jamovi. So we're going to do it in Jamovi. Now, um, we are using version 2.3.13, a couple of changes over the summer. Um, so not too much, adding some languages, finishing some languages, doing some bug fixes, you know, that kind of thing. So nothing major, especially to the MR. OK, so let's pull up Parenthood. Parenthood, this data set, can be found in the LSJ data folder. So if we go to, I'm not going to open it, of course, but if we go to our LSJ hyphen data, Right in our data library, data library, we go here and we find we scroll down and we get the parenthood. So this is related to chapter 12 and multiple regression, of course, and it's useful for both correlation and regression. It sets up your data like this. Now, day and ID are the exact same. Right. And so we have 100 days of measurements. So 100 entries ID really doesn't necessarily need to be a variable, but that's all right. We have the amount of sleep that Dan, the father, gets. We have the amount of sleep the baby, an infant gets. And then we have the amount of grumpiness measured each day from Dan. So how grumpy he gets. Now, in the previous video, we already set up the relationship, be a negative relationship between Dan and his amount of sleep and the amount of grumpiness that he gets. And then we did a multiple regression where we also came up with the amount of uh, baby sleep and what it does to Dan. So what I want to do is I want to set up my multiple regression. So we go to regression and we go to linear regression, and that's where we're going to set it up. We are going to put Dan's sleep. We are going to predict the amount of sleep that Dan gets based on baby sleep and his grumpiness level. But first, we're going to do baby sleep. OK, and um, oh man, I want to kind of hide this, but I can't make. Oh, I can. So let's do that. I want to hide it. Oh, it's not going to let me hide it all the way, is it? No. OK, don't look over here. Pay no attention to this. And what I want to do while I'm doing this is go to model builder because I'm going to add a new block. So block one is just this is how we do our multiple regression. OK, a hierarchical multiple regression. So we are going to do block one is baby sleep. So that's going to be model one. And then I'm going to bring Dan down here and I'm going to put it in covariates. I know it says it's a nominal variable, but it's really not. And so when I did that and I brought it down over here after I added a block, Jamovi correctly added it to block two, which is really important. OK, now you can do this manually. If you added both of them at the same time, you're like, oh, wait, I was going to do a multiple regression. You can add the block and then drag and drop these in the appropriate places. Right. Because I can add this to block one if I want to, or I can keep it in block two or I can switch them. I can put baby sleep down in block two because it's a drag and drop. OK, if you had multiple other predictors, you can add as many hierarchical blocks as you want to. OK, so you add a new block, you add it, you add it and you can do that. Um, uh, one at a time sequentially by adding a new block and then putting your variable in the right place, whether whether it's a covariate or a factor. Uh, covariates are continuous variables. Factors are dummy coded variables. OK, so 
make sure you do that. And the reason why I didn't put Dan Grump into factors is because it's not dummy coded. It is a uh, continuous variable with integers, right? So whole numbers. So I could change it to the scale. It doesn't really matter. Just if it matters for you to help you keep things straight, then change it in the double click on this and change it to continuous. I mean, that's all it takes, right? So let's click back on this, right? And so boom, it's now there. And it kept all of that. So that's how you do the model builder. You add a new block or you hit the X button to delete a block. That's it. That's it. That's how you do a hierarchical multiple regression. Now, there isn't stepwise in here. You can't take add or take in a variable based on Fs or Ps like you can in other programs. I think JASP has a stepwise function, which does everything automatically for you based on criteria you set on the F value of the ANOVA um, or P values of the ANOVA. So you get to uh, step backward or step forward based on uh, those things. We're not going to be talking about those in this one because Jamovi does not have that functionality. Interestingly enough, Jamovi doesn't really have that functionality because it's not really all that common to do stepwise uh, stepwise multiple regressions. So here, this block regression is what people do. Now, there is um, there is debate on whether or not doing hierarchical multiple regression like this in this block manner, this 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 uh, enter manner um, is a violation of assumptions, kind of like the same thing of inflating alpha doing multiple t-tests. So be aware of that. If you do this and then, you know, you're writing up a, a research report, a, a reviewer might say, why did you do, why didn't you just do a simultaneous multiple regression for all of your control variables? So you need to have a good reason for doing it this way, okay? You need to have a theoretical reason, a logical reason for doing this. You can't just say, I did it because I wanted to, uh, because that's not going to fly, obviously, in review. So you need to make sure that you're setting it up like that. Oh, I accidentally clicked on estimated marginal means. Let's go through and grab our assumptions. We want to get our autocorrelation, make sure that we're not measuring our X variables and our Y variables as the same thing. Let's get our collinearity statistics, our VIF, and our tolerance. And let's get our normality to make sure that our DV is a normally distributed uh, sample. And we'll look at those in just a second. Um, model fit. We want to get our, our statistics here. We get R and R squared. Let's just get adjusted. AIC, BIC, and RMSE. Uh, root mean square error. And let's get our overall model fit test. And then our model coefficients. We want the omnibus. Uh, ANOVA, we had our confidence intervals, our standardized estimates, our betas to allow us to compare predictors directly with one another. Okay, their, you know, their strength, their magnitude, that kind of thing. And let's get our marginal means. Okay, so let's um, grab baby sleep and we're going to add a new term and we're going to drag Dan Grump there. So these are just going to give us two different graphs um, and we're also going to get our tables for that, which is going to show us the mean value plotted and then plus or minus one standard deviation. Okay, so let's pull this back now so we can see it for all of its glory. <laughs> okay. So let's take a look at our fit measures. Now, one thing that I wish um, was compact here is uh, a, an indication, a slightly better indication of what has changed. The only thing that you really do get is this model comparison. So let's take a look, okay? And remember I said delta R squared or triangle, what, what looks like a triangle, but it's the Greek letter delta, lower, uh, uppercase delta, um, is delta R squared is telling us whether or not um, the change is big or not big, okay? you know, significant or not significant. So we'll see. Let's take a look. Model one has an R of 0.628 or 0.63 and R squared of 0.39. Now, if you adjust that for bias, it's 0.388, not a lot of. And if we look at the overall model, it's significant. If we look at model two, where we added the second predictor, we get our, uh, our much larger R and R squared values. Okay. So 0 0.91, 0 0.836. Okay. And if we go over here, we have a far more extreme value. Okay. So 0 0.247, 0 0.5, or excuse me, 247.5 and 0 0.001. I mean, the p-values are the p-values, right? These are extreme p-values. So let's go to the model comparison and take a look, right? So this is comparing model one to model two. Model one only had baby sleep in it. Model two has both baby sleep and Dan Grump, as you can see here. Or let me open the model builder so you can all see, okay? So those are our two models, okay? Block one has only one variable in it. So if we look here at R squared, delta R squared, that is we're going to, oops, I don't wanna do that, sorry. Um, 0.442, that means that we had a change in R squared from 0.39 to 0 0.836, 0.394 to 0 0.36, 0 0.442. Now, delta R squared is also tested against zero. And here we have 0.442, so that's the change in delta, has a very large F value, and so a very, very small P value. Look at that, it's wild, it's wild. Um, we don't need to worry too much um, on model one with baby sleep. We have, we have uh, no violations here, we're not, not too bad. So I love how model specific results come up, right? Model specific results. It'll be on the highest level when you are done setting all of your options here, okay? And so it'll give you this drop-down menu. If you want to see what your model looks like at model one, it'll give, give you what model one looks like, and then model two will have all of um, all of the rest, right? So as you add more in, remember, block the blocks are not taking out any variables. So when you do a block, you're adding more variables while the 
of the previous block. So if we had a block three and we added a third variable in here, block one, baby sleep, and block two, Dan Grump would also appear in model three. So that's how you do this hierarchical function. Okay, so it just keeps adding on to it. So if we go to model one and let's look at baby sleep, it's um, the estimate is 0 0.308, which is to say that um, for every hour of sleep the baby gets, uh, Dan's uh, amount of sleep is 0.3 of an hour. Okay, 0 0.31. So we'll call that about 20 minutes, a little less than 20 minutes. Okay. So for every hour the baby gets, Dan gets an extra 20 minutes, okay? And if we go look at the standard estimate, 0.628, okay? Um, and uh, that is significant, okay? Look at that. Um, and if we looked at uh, R squared, uh, the amount of sleep that Dan gets is explained about 40% by the amount of sleep the baby gets. But let's look at model two, right? Because those R squared values are much better. We go back to what happens um, in the previous video where we see that the baby sleep here, the estimate now is 0 0.08, which is about six minutes, right? About six minutes, slightly less than six minutes. And so instead of 20 minutes or 19 minutes of extra sleep, actually, it turns out that baby sleep doesn't predict the amount of Dan's sleep that he gets. Really, it comes down to how much grumpiness he has, which again is weird. I did this on purpose. It's weird um, that we're setting up Dan the grumpiness level as an observed value, right? We can observe how grumpiness somebody is. We can also observe how much sleep somebody gets. But if we're if we're measuring this temporally, where you would definitely say that grumpiness is the effect. I did this on purpose. I did this on purpose so you would all follow along, and it wouldn't just look that it it, it wouldn't look just just overly reasonable. I wanted to play a little bit. Okay. And you can see that as, as we added Dan's grumpiness level, the magnitude of the sleep contribution is much, much lower. Instead of 0.6, it's now 0.17, much, much lower because grumpiness level plays a significant role, a negative role, but a significant, a more meaningful role. That's what I mean by significant here, a more meaningful role in um, predicting how much sleep Dan received. His grumpiness really predicts the amount of sleep he gets much better than the amount of sleep his baby gets. And you can kind of see that, right? Because maybe the mother gets up more in the middle of the night than Dan does. And so you end up with a, uh, a shift there. So um, when we look at our statistics, we still have no violations of assumptions. So that's good. And then we get our, um, we get our, uh, our marginal mean plots. Okay. So each of these plots have plotted a, a plus or minus one standard deviation and then the mean in the middle there, um, which is just about right there and then this one as well tighter confidence intervals so more uncertainty in the baby sleep and dan sleep comparison less uncertainty with the grumpiness and dan sleep which is backed up by the model statistics so that's how you do a hierarchical multiple regression in jamovi you set it up by blocks if you have any comments suggestions questions or feedback please leave those in the comments down below thank you so much for watching this one bye